Hi. How you doing? Today, I'm gonna be showing you how I did this. And this. But before I get to the actual physical aspect of the short film, I'm gonna throw it over to me inside to show off the more visual aspect of the film. And then I'll come back here and show you how to climb the actual rope. So take it away, me. Inside. Thanks, other me. <laughs> That's right. Before we get into the more physical aspect of this short film, I wanted to talk first about the, the visuals of this short film, which I am very proud of, you'll see in a second. And that brings me to the point of which I have made a shot list for this, well, not entirely. I made it for about half the story and then I stopped. <laughs> Luckily, I had in mind what I wanted, but I didn't do the whole, all the shots that I wanted. And I think if you were to do a shot list, you should definitely finish it. <laughs> but this is one of the first shot lists I've ever created. There were a lot of changes made to it. And I think uh, one of the most important things when designing a short film like this is making a shot list. So I highly recommend doing that. There's a lot more that went into the creation and craft of Frisbee. Um, compared to the short film I, I made last year, Unsee, there was not too much planning. It was made over the course of about a year, and there was no shot list. It was basically just me putting the camera down and finding a shot that looked good on the spot, and then we just went ahead and filmed. Tried to get the audio all good, and then it was off to the editing room. That's not the best way to go about things. Obviously, I didn't think about it at the time and I just wanted to get it done and posted because I didn't really have much time left. So in this case, for a five minute short film, <laughs> when I said I wanted to dumb things down and become more simple with short films, I meant it. Five minutes is not a lot of time, but it's enough time to calculate your shots and know where you're going to film and be ready to film. Uh, when you're out actually at your filming locations, which in this case was my backyard and a little of the inside of my house, that's where your storyboard really comes in handy. So without further ado, let's get into the simple cinematography of Frisbee. So at first glance, you might not be able to tell that there is any cinematography at all in Frisbee, but in fact there is. But it's rather simple and easy to miss. The cinematography ties all the way back to one of the directors that I really look up to, which is Alfred Hitchcock. Now he is a critically acclaimed and classic director of Psycho. Yes, that one. I looked some of his tips up, some of his guidelines, just browsing the internet. I found some that really interested me. Now keep in mind, these are only guidelines given by Hitchcock. It's not like you have to follow these guidelines for every film you make. These are just simple rules that you can use for a specific project, and I thought it would fit mine the best. Also, it's important to note that once you know the rules, you can most definitely break them. So, starting off, with the first two shots of the short film, you have me, the, or the character, placed on the left side of the frame. And then you go to the second shot, which is the frisbee, over on the right side of the frame. Now you might not think anything of this, but already I've established a very simple dynamic. The character is on the left side of the frame, and their goal is on the right side. Alfred Hitchcock said that for this specific guideline, if a character is placed on the left side of the frame, it is indicated that this character is weaker, evil, or they want and or need something. In this case, my character wants a frisbee. And this brings us to the right side of the frame, which indicates that the character has gotten to the finish line and has found success. So in this scenario, we have my character on the left wanting something, which in this case is the frisbee, and on the right side of the frame is their goal. You can probably guess that by the end of the film, the character, once they have gotten their frisbee, they end up on the right side of the frame. And once you establish this guideline, like as I did with the first two shots, you can most definitely play around with it, as I did with various shots. As you can see in this shot here, I am struggling on the left side of the frame with my neighbor, 
Thatcher on the right side of the frame. Now this is obvious symbolism stating that I am clearly failing on the left side of frame trying to get up the rope and my neighbor is on the right side of the frame looking down on me and judging me. Now this brings up the idea that my neighbor is better than the character being on the right side of the frame. And this pushes the character to where they're actually on the other side of the frame. That means that they have beaten that person and they have proved to their neighbor that they could climb the rope. But this is clearly a failing shot. And actually the shot right afterward is another example of the simple cinematography in this short film. You see that the character has clearly failed and is just sitting on the swing not knowing what to do. They are still remaining on the left side of the frame while the right side of the frame is covered by a tree. Now the tree here is covering up the entire right side of the frame indicating that the character has symbolically hit a wall and they don't know where to go from here. That means success is basically unreachable unless they find some other final way to get to the other side of the frame. Okay, so we have the left side of the frame and the right side of the frame, right? Very simple dynamic. Well, I decided to take that into my own hands and have a little twist slash addition to these guidelines that Alfred Hitchcock has provided me. So I've made a little addition to this dynamic by adding the center of the frame. Now, if you watch the short film again, you probably would have noticed that a lot of things are in the center of the frame, most notably the rope that I am struggling to get on. Now, in this case, I wanted to make the middle of the frame indicate any sort of help that the character can get. And this is why the rope is always, or most of the time, in the middle of the frame, because the rope is symbolically the help that the character needs to get to their goal, the frisbee. And also, once I managed to get this technique down and apply it to the filmmaking, I decided to play around with it a bit more. Now this shot right here comes right after the shot where the tree is blocking the right side of the frame. And so in this shot again, it is showing that I have failed. I'm just sitting on the swing, just swinging around, not knowing what to do. And eventually, I drift toward the center of the frame, which then comes a realization in the character's head. You can see that they look up, they clearly have a goal in mind. The character quickly looks to their right, and then they get up. As you can see, this shot also displays the left and right framing technique, where the left side of frame is a little more gray and dim, and the right side of frame is full of sunlight, there's a fountain out of focus, and it looks beautiful, and that indicates the character's goal. Some of these shots I didn't even intend to have the left and right side framing. Some of these just fell together, and I was very lucky to have some of these shots. So after the character gets up, it cuts to the next shot, where the character is again sitting in the middle of the shot, watching a video on how to climb a rope. And again, left and right side framing. On the left side of the frame, it's a bit more dark, and on the right side of the frame is a lamp, indicating opportunity for success. And if you watch the short film, you can probably point out a bit more examples of this technique. Those were just the most specific shots that I decided to pick for this video to show most clearly this technique being shown off. And so that's the cinematography for this short film. Again, very simple. There's not much to follow here other than the left side of the frame, the middle of the frame, and the right side of the frame. So I don't want to drag this along, but I do want to mention one more thing about this short film, and that is the visual effects. This shot, where I am doing some push-ups in my bedroom, fun fact, the moon, the clouds, and the trees are not there. That is visual effects. The original shot I wanted to have the actual moon in, but I was not able to fit the moon out of the window for the time that I had to film the shot. And it looked a bit bland. It was just a dark window. So I added a bit more to the shot, a bit more opportunity, a bit more inspiration for the character by adding a moon, meaning they could reach for the stars, probably. Um, so yes, that is visual effects. And so that leads us to the final shot of visual effects, which is what you've all been waiting for, the fall. Now, if you don't want me to ruin the magic for you, you can skip this section. I'll leave a timestamp here that you can skip to. 
but you've probably guessed it this shot of me falling about 25 feet to the ground is in fact <sighs> Two separate shots. Oh. I know, shocking, right? I didn't actually fall 25 feet to my inevitable breaking of limbs. I know, it's disappointing. But yes, I went out one day and I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna film this shot because I know it's gonna be in the short film and I know it's gonna be amazing. So I brought my ginormous trampoline to the middle of my backyard and that's what I landed on. And you can probably guess I filmed a separate shot of me landing on the ground and selling the hit later on. Now people with a very sharp eye could probably tell that this shot is off if they've been in my backyard before, but you could probably tell by this shot, clearly the swing is way too high. <laughs> Obviously the swing needed to be high enough to be out of the way of the trampoline because I knew I was gonna cut the two shots off. So, I needed to raise the swing just a tiny bit for the trampoline to fit there. And that might have given it away for some people, but there you go. By the way, this took a while to edit. Obviously, this was the shot that took the longest to finish uh, because it was one of the only vi visual effects shots. And also, I just had to edit myself out bouncing on the trampoline. It was this whole process but I got it done. But this is a this is a little fun fact here. It's It was actually kind of painful. When I fell, you can see that I grab onto the rope and I head down, I fall, and once I reach the seat of the swing, right before I land on the trampoline, my foot hits the step of the swing and the rope goes right into my crotch. Yep. That... <laughs> That hurt a lot. That was actually the only thing that hurt um, during the fall. You'd be surprised because you'd think falling 25 feet, I would hurt uh, my back or my break my neck or something. But that was actually what hurt the most. And it wasn't that bad. I was fine. But I was just relieved that I didn't die and I got the shot. And it turned out really good. I am super proud of this. So that's all for me. That's all for the visual aspect. Um, I'm sure uh, me outside, uh, they want to still show you how to climb the rope. So here you go. Don't expect much. <laughs> thank you, me. It, wait, thank you inside me, inside my house. Now I'm going to show you how to climb a rope. Please forgive me if I slip because it's raining. <laughs> Fun fact, the video I watched inside in the short film is actually the video I first saw on how to actually climb this rope. It's an old military technique. So, I recommend you use winter gloves if you're actually gonna do this, and if you have a rope like this, I recommend a thicker rope, but this is all I have, and it still works. So, what you're gonna wanna do, I'm gonna grab an area of the rope as high as you can, and it's basically a pull-up. That's all it is. If you could do a couple of pull-ups, you could probably climb this entire 30-foot rope. I did, so you can probably do it too. So grab as high as you can, pull yourself up, and wrap around like so. Your foot grabs the rope, pushes it to the side, and then your top foot goes over the other foot. You see how the rope is overlapped? That's what you want. And then step on your other foot. So now you're just locked in place. My hands aren't doing any of the work. It's only my feet. And then you let go. Oh. And then you do it again. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm tired. Was that a good enough explanation? Hopefully, I'll leave a link to the military video. How about that? Goodness gracious. <laughs> Bye. So this is just one last message from me to you saying thank you. I just want to thank you for watching this stuff and um, cheering me on and appreciating what I make. I really appreciate your guys' feedback and positive comments um, because I love making this stuff. I'm very proud of this short film and I want to make more like this in the future. And one last time, if you haven't seen this short film, I don't know what you're doing here at the end of this behind the scenes video without even watching the other short film, 
you're crazy. But I highly recommend you go watch the short film in all of its 4K glory. Um, I'll leave a link in the description or I'll leave a, a suggestion box up at the top corners. Um, please go watch it. I worked really hard on it. But thank you in general for watching. And that's all. So I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.